Steve Stensland with the Harris County uh, Deputies Organization, FOP Lodge 39. Thanks for joining us at the Lodge. Today's a great day, and I'm glad that all of you have attended to uh, share this moment with us. Uh, standing uh, with me today at our Lodge are, uh, we have Constable Ted Heap, we have uh, Constable Mark Herman, Constable Phil uh, Sandler from Precinct 8, we have Commissioner uh, Jack Cagle, we have a candidate for uh, Commissioner Precinct 2, Jack Mormon. We also have candidate for County Judge, Alexandria Mueller. Um, <clears throat> we also have a representative from the Houston Police uh, Officers Association, which is gonna be um, Doug Hunt. And we have uh, the Houston Firefighters uh, President for the uh, Professional Firefighters is gonna be Marty Langton. He's here with us today. Um, the purpose of this gathering is to endorse some of the finest candidates in the United States and Harris County. We are together, we are united with one objective, which is to provide the best public service we can for our citizens of Harris County. We believe that <clears throat> with, those, with these candidates, because they are the tip of the spear, um, that's, that's why we endorse them. So we all stand here in one voice and one, one, one group. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce uh, the Houston Police Officers Union of President, Mr. Doug. Yes, sir. My name is Doug Griffith. I'm the president of the Houston Police Officers Union. And a lot of people ask, why is the Houston Police Officers Union getting involved in county elections? Well, I'll tell you why. I was born and raised right here in North Shore. And I can tell you, my parents still live there. I still have property there. And it has become a war zone in that area. Right next to my parents' house, they've had two homicides in two weeks. That's unacceptable. That's unacceptable for Harris County. And at some point, we have to call out these elected officials who have a job to do and have failed miserably at it. We can see it on the streets every single day. I'm here because a lot of these folks behind me have to deal with these individuals and can't say the things that need to be said. I can't. These are nothing but corrupt individuals who are afraid to get in front of the media and debate these, our, our candidates here. Ms. Mueller has stood up for Harris County and is going to prove that she is the best candidate for this job. She is going to take Harris County and make it what it was once, a proud area for Houston. Harris County is in, has a real issue with crime, and until we do something about it and get these corrupt individuals out of office, nothing will change. Thank you. My name is Marty Langton, the proud president of the Houston Professional Firefighters Association. Uh, and much like what Doug said, people ask, you know, what is the role of firefighters? And public safety is absolutely critically the number one most important thing to the citizens that we serve. We are out there on the front lines every day. We are here to not only talk to the citizens, talk to the voters, but also here to support our brothers and sisters not only at the Harris County Sheriff's Department, but all law enforcement, to say we all want safe streets, safe neighborhoods. And what we have to do is believe in the hope that it's a possibility that our kids are safe going to school. We need leadership. We need those that are going to hold people accountable. And that's why, as a lifelong Houstonian, firefighters believe in supporting our officials that support public safety. Constable Heap. My name is Ted Heap. I'm the constable of Harris County Precinct 5. As you look behind me today, what you see is you see hundreds of years of experience. And it is an exciting day. It's an exciting day because I've never seen a football team go in and expect to win a game without a game plan. I've never seen a corporation expect to succeed without a plan. And for the first time in a long time, Harris County has a plan. That's exciting to us. It's exciting to us as law enforcement officials to be able to see how it is we're going to be successful in Harris County. That's the reason why we've all joined together. We bring our differences, we bring our county, we bring the city, and we come together as one to try to achieve a goal. And that's what's gonna happen in November. Constable. Thank you. 
I'm Mark Herman, uh, the constable up in Precinct 4, and, and I can say here today with 100% uh, certainty, the people of Harris County have figured it out. Uh, they know we're in a public safety crisis, one that we've never seen uh, because of the failed policies put in by the current administration. Uh, we must have change. Uh, they, they, they've got to change their priorities. Alexander Miller is the only choice for county judge. Uh, she is the one that's going to turn this county around. And if we don't, and this isn't Democrat or Republican, this is public safety. You got to pick the best candidate. We've got to turn Harris County around or we will lose Harris County forever. Thank you. My name is Phil Sandlin. I'm the constable for Precinct 8. And I can tell you uh, my constituents in Precinct 8 are approaching me daily talking about the crime, the revolving door that is happening down at the jail, uh, these uh, defendants that are arrested that are continuing to be let out on the streets on multi bonds. Uh, low bonds, PR bonds, when uh, they're, they're dangerous to our society, they're victimizing our citizens. Uh, and what I want to see is, is some change uh, at our commissioner's court, along with uh, getting in a new county judge, new commissioner, that, uh, as Constable Herman said, will change some of these policies and make our streets safer. Uh, and that's what we're all about. Uh, we serve everybody, uh, no matter if you're Republican or Democrat, we serve everybody, and we want everybody to be safe. Thank you very much. Mr. Cagle. I'm Jack Cagle, and it is a privilege and an honor to stand with this august body of law enforcement. What is law enforcement? L, law, it's certainly not lawlessness, which is what we are facing too much of on our streets these days. With more than 182 dead people because of the failed process of letting people out on bonds, with the problem of folks afraid to go to restaurants uh, wearing their jewelry because it's not safe to be able to shop or to eat or to enjoy your streets. Lawlessness is prevailing and the answer is that we need to support the law enforcement officers that are out there. And that's where if I come to the A of law, You'll note all law enforcement is unified in saying what we are doing is not working. You have HPOU, you have the Sheriff's Union, you have our firefighters, you have constables and sheriffs locking arms all saying enough is enough and it's time for us to adopt policies that will address the lawlessness that's on our streets. And the third W of law is what is law enforcement? Well, I'll tell you what it's not. A parks program for planting trees is a beautiful parks program, but it does not belong in the category of law enforcement when some folks brag about how they are helping in the law enforcement category. Programs for free daycare may be good programs to be debated in another zone, but it is not law enforcement. Law enforcement are boots on the ground. It is these people that we need to be able to unleash to make our streets safe. And no matter how you categorize it, at the end of the day, you have to ask two questions. Why is it that the law enforcement are all unified behind a change? And the second question is, ask yourselves, how many more officers do we actually have on the streets, boots on the ground, in our growing, expanding population in this county. And you'll note they have not kept up with the growth of the county, and you will note that they have not kept up, especially in these times of where we've had this crime pandemic. And I'll now turn it over to uh, Jack Moore. Well, thank you to my former colleague, Commissioner Cagle. Thank you to all our law enforcement representatives for being here today. Thank you all for showing up. I'll be brief. Defunding and underfunding law enforcement has become a fact of life in Harris County. Unfortunately, so has lying about it. Look, it's, ab it's abundantly clear who the men and women in blue support, and it's because we support them. Thank you very much. I'll turn it over to Alex Mueller now. Thank you. Good morning. Can't express how proud I am to stand with these great leaders. And as it was referenced earlier, 
It's not just these individuals that are up here. They represent not only hundreds of years of experience, but thousands of deputies that don't get that opportunity to voice what they need. And we've come together, standing here today, not to just say crime is bad, but to say we have a plan to fix it. These men and women that wear the badge have not been properly resourced to do their job. And today we stand unified. We have the votes we get in office to fund a thousand additional law enforcement positions. That is a serious commitment to safety. That is what an immediate solution looks like to an immediate problem. That is the difference here. The current leadership had three and a half years to mobilize the weight and power of Harris County, and they sat on their hands. That's why I'm raising my hand an opportunity uh, to ask you all, let me lead this great county. I don't have to have phone calls with Commissioner uh, Cagle, hopefully soon to be Commissioner Jack Mormon, to know what we need to do. The answer is always the same. There's so much divisiveness at the national level, but at the county, we all understand what we need to do. The solutions are clear. And all these individuals, we don't have to agree on every issue, but we agree on the most important. And the most important is our county's responsibility, our obligation to protect the most vulnerable, and that's what's not happened. So there's been a lot of discussion and details about whether we've defunded or a meager increase. The point is they haven't done their job. We have not prioritized public safety, and you can't look at the last few years of investment and say the most important thing, more boots on the ground. Where has it been? Just recently, we're adding some more detention officers and a little bit of overtime. We can't keep expecting more from a fewer base. Every month, we lose more law enforcement, whether it's Houston Police Department, the Sheriff's Office, or our constables that are choosing any career but this. And it's not the weight of a badge, it's the weight of a Harris County badge that's become too much for them. So that's what we've laid out. Within 60 days, you have the votes right here to make it happen. We have the funding. We will fund a 1,000 additional law enforcement. That's how you make our community safe, and that's what our commitment to doing. And to Lena Hidalgo, I'm standing right here. You said you ran on transparency, but you refused to debate. How can voters make an informed decision if you don't have the decency to stand behind your ideas and let's have a meeting of the minds and debate these policies? Instead, you've chosen time and time again to not only slander and insult your own party, whether it's Senator Whitmire or District Attorney Kim Ogg or even members of the media, for them asking the simple questions of what have you done to tackle crime? So I've raised my hand, I'm sitting here, and I understand you might be scared. If I had your record, I'd be scared too. But it doesn't nullify your obligation and your duty to look to the voters. You know, Part of why I'm running is the idea of what should the Harris County judge be. I've watched for three and a half years that we had someone in a leadership position that prioritizes what their national donors want to hear instead of focusing on solving the kitchen table issues here in Harris County. So what I'm offering is a stark contrast. Someone that is going to be an advocate for Harris County first. For all of Harris County, focused on those kitchen table issues, safety being number one of them. And instead of attacking people, I want to work across the aisle. How do we get more resources? Because we know, we heard even Sheriff Gonzalez say, if I have more resources, I can do a better job. More resources mean quicker response times, faster investigations, dangerous criminals off the streets. So I want to work hand in hand with everyone so we make sure that everyone has that opportunity for safety. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Jose Lopez. I'm the Vice President of the Harris County Deputies Organization, and I'll be doing my part in Spanish. So, mi nombre es Jose Lopez, yo soy el Vice Presidente del Sindicato del Departamento de Harris, que representa más de 3,200 oficiales en este condado. Y, ¿Y cuál es la razón por la cual estamos aquí hoy? La razón que estamos aquí hoy es que queremos que el público y, y la gente que vive en el condado de Harris sepa lo que está pasando en nuestro condado y nuestro el crimen en nuestro condado está fuera de control y, y fuera de control estoy usando una palabra buena porque tenemos que hacer cambios y los cambios tienen que venir de la jueza actual que tenemos que es Lina Hidalgo que no nos está dando los recursos y no nos está dando los fondos necesarios para que podamos combatir el, el crimen en nuestro condado. Si seguimos a, al, al paso que vamos, no vamos a ver los cambios. Estamos aquí hoy unidos, tenemos representantes del Houston Police Department, de los bomberos, tenemos este, comisionados, tenemos constables que están aquí con nosotros y estamos unidos 
pidiéndole a la gente y diciéndole al pueblo que nos ayuden a hacer cambios en este noviembre, que es cuando vamos a tener las elecciones, que estamos apoyando a, a, a la candidata Alexandra Miller para jueza del condado, al igual al Jack Norman para comisionado de este condado. Estos candidatos son este, los que nosotros sabemos que nos van a ayudar a hacer la diferencia que necesitamos que ver en nuestro condado. ¿Y qué es lo que necesitamos que ver? Necesitamos que ver que bajemos el crimen y tenemos que combatir este crimen con más oficiales y, y mejores recursos y equipo para que lo podamos hacer propiamente. So, con estos candidatos, en este noviembre, les estamos pidiendo, vengan, salgan, voten por ellos. Estamos cansados de estarles pidiendo a la jueza y a la corte actual de lo que necesitamos para poder combatir el crimen y no nos los están dando. Nos están dando una cantidad muy significativa, nada comparado a lo que es necesario para poder proteger a nuestros ciudadanos de este condado. So, por favor, en noviembre salgan y voten por Alexandra Miller y Jack Mormon. Muchas gracias. Thank you. news today, your endorsement. Can you talk about that a little bit more? Are you representing yourself or your or your team? Well, you know, uh, probably a little bit of both, but I will tell you this, um, I think the Houston firefighters have been quite clear leading up into this campaign. Uh, I think what is missing in Harris County, what has been, and I would argue from where I stand in the city of Houston, uh, is showing the public the hope that public safety stands in solidarity. And I can tell you that the president of the Harris County Sheriff's Organization, uh, David Cuevas, is not only a good friend, but an honest uh, and a good officer and a great president. And the commitment that we made to them is that we will stand with Harris County Deputies uh, Officers Organization and that firefighters support law enforcement always. We're on the front lines together, we'll continue to be, and whatever we have to do to ensure that public safety, and that's not just law enforcement, that's fire, EMS, and rescue, is the top priority. That is what we will do. Alexander, um, you mentioned <coughs> releasing a comprehensive plan to tackle public safety. You mentioned a thousand police officers, but what else? What's part of this comprehensive plan to address public safety here in Harris County? So we know there's backlogs, the 130,000 case, uh, 60,000 pre-Harvey. They've at best now stabilized. We're not moving it down. We know it's over eight month delays with forensics. Uh, and essentially our district attorney, they've not been able to keep up adequate number of felony prosecutors, 800 uh, average caseload. Um, so what I would say is the, the full shift here is that those one-time COVID dollars, ARPA, under 15% has been used for anything that would even roughly be considered justice and safety. It's an immediate shift. Every department that is involved in the criminal justice system needs a shot in the arm. If you talk to them, they have people that are, they're willing to hire that will come back. And, and so focus is a thousand law enforcement, but we know when we get into office that all of these resources, the backlogs and delays are at multiple stages. Um, and part of why we say a thousand law enforcement, it also comes down to our jails. Uh, 50 million to transfer people. Uh, we're at max capacity. Uh, it's not safe for our guards and it's not safe for the inmates. Uh, and we just haven't seen that progress. The Sheriff Deputies Union filed a lawsuit back in September, and since then the problems in the jail have continued to plague. And so where they're talking about a handful of increases and a million or two of overtime, we're saying, no, we were given these ARPA dollars not to expand the scope of government, but to do what we are first and the only best suited entity to solve, and that's our criminal justice system. And all those thousand offices, of ARPA dollars, they're not permanent, they no. run out. So how are you gonna maintain sure. that? So, so our, our general operating Army, budget, Army. It, sorry. How are you going to maintain yes. an additional 1,000 yes. officers and all that comes with it? Health, Absolutely. So roughly it's 100K per deputy. Uh, so inflation, we'll probably see that go up a little bit. But we're talking about a $2 billion operating budget. So that's 5%. During the 08 recession, in two years, our county had to cut 15%. This county government continues to have record spending every year, but the one thing they won't spend on is more boots on the ground. So we will not be able to hire a thousand day one. That's why there is a plan we will work and leave critical challenge, recruiting, retention, and then respect. Respect is that criminal justice piece. But when you're talking about 5% in a budget, yes, we can find that. You cannot tell me this isn't efficiently operated. And what's interesting, if you look at the headcount, 
County administration has grown, but those that are classified as justice and administration, that's actually smaller. So we've seen this government prioritize the growth of the bureaucratic state over the residents of Harris County, because if you ask any residents, do I want another bureaucrat or do I want another law enforcement officer patrolling or working in our jails, it's a pretty clear choice, and that's what we're making this election about. And when you, when Twitter mm -hmm. yep. Cable uh, proposed a similar plan, I guess this was about a year ago? Yep, 500 uh, deputies is what the right. Republican commissioners and all and, commissioner Cable. Well, I, so I was gonna ask, mm -hmm. at that point, Judge Cadalgo and some of the Democrats on the commissioner's court mm -hmm. said basically, Putting that in place would require cuts to stuff like the, the health department mm -hmm. and sure. you know, other kind so, of core services or vital stuff in their mind. Mm -hmm. Can you put this in place without cuts for the services like that? So there, it's going to have to be cuts. Like I said, we're talking about 5% of the budget across departments, and we're offering a clear framework. The more you impact public safety, that's the funding priority. Now, I think it's interesting. Judge Hidalgo just had an uh, interview with ABC, and what she talked about was expanding the right of early education to every child in Harris County. So early education, if you take census numbers, 300,000, zero to five. Now, we just spent $50 million on preschool for 16 um, and then for 1,000 kids, which is 16K a kid. So Judge Hidalgo is talking about a funding commitment of almost over $5 billion, a billion down at the least. And I'm talking about can we find $100 million, 5% of our operating budget to protect the health and safety of every resident in Harris County? Uh, two questions for both you and, and Commissioner Cagle. Uh, this Democratic majority has created multiple new layers, uh, multiple new departments. Which, if any, like to see go away, yeah. and is that enough to, to fund the <laughs> Seven months ago when we had budget hearings, many of you may be curious where were the budget hearings for this cycle. Um, we didn't have budget hearings in this new transparent administration. Uh, but seven months ago when we had budget hearings, I proposed a budget that like many of us who have had to contract in our home budgets because of Harvey, because of COVID, because of the struggles that we've had, uh, I propose that we in the government side, because we are using taxpayer funds, do the same thing and that we go back to the 2019 budget. It's kind of hard to know where some of the money is being spent these days. So if we went back to the 2019 budget to contract our belts a little bit as a group, we would have enough to fully fund all the requests that law enforcement in Harris County requested. We would have enough to pay the additional 20 million that had been promised to try to get some pay equalization back three and a half, four years ago. And we would have enough to put $42 million back into the PIC fund. Now what that would require is, is for us to go back and eliminate all of the new bureaucracy that had been hired and not all those positions have been fulfilled, but that have been retained and hired in the last three years. And that's where I would start with our cut is, what have we added in the last three and a half years? Let's go back to 2019. Just like many of us had to go back in our own personal budgets a couple of years to be able to survive the pandemic and to survive Harvey, let's do the same thing on the government level. And if we go back to our 2019 budget, then we have enough funds to do this plan without having to raise the taxes on the public. And we have enough funds to actually end up with money going back into our depleted PIC fund, our public contingency fund, in case we had another Harvey that came up our pipe. Commissioner Cooper, you're also in the process of adopting the new budget the county is. And I'm just wondering, are you planning to introduce your own alternate proposal in some form this budget cycle and do you plan to, I know in the past you skip the meetings to, you know, walk past the budgets you don't agree with. Is that on the table this time? Well, I've attended every meeting but one three years ago when the proposal was to increase the taxes 8% in that one year. There were some who said that that would be an effect of 12% on most homeowners. And one other time, some eight, nine years ago when I wasn't able to attend due to an illness. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do in this next meeting. There's an old law that says that uh, at, from about the same time period that says that you need a quorum, uh, a super quorum before, in order to raise the taxes on the public without their consent. And that's an important phrase. 
you know, we could have put the raising of the taxes of the public on a vote and let the public decide whether they wanted to have their taxes raised or not. This is talking about raising taxes without the public's consent. Um, and so to answer your question, um, that, that old law that said that you need a quorum of four if you're going to raise the taxes without the public's consent, there's some old adages there that also talk about uh, the judge is able to ask any sheriff mm -hmm. to come and enforce the quorum. And so I'm not going to say in advance whether I'm going to be there or not because uh, I, I don't necessarily want to, one way or the other, telegraph the need for having a sheriff to come get me. Well, we have uh, Councilman Pete Herman here. What's the status of your defunding complaint, the comptroller's ruling? Uh, where are we at? They've tried to attempt uh, to flip the narrative that you are now, of course, defunding law enforcement. Right. I'd like to hear what y'all have to say. I'm going to have to say just real quickly, and I'm not here for this, but just real quickly, I find it ironic. A couple of the outlets sent me a media release that Adrian Garcia put out. And uh, yesterday after the hearing, the, you know, the court in Travis County basically denied Harris County's uh, restraining order, said we're not giving you one because I don't think anything had happened yet. And, uh, but but I, I did read his press release, and I spoke to the comptroller's office and the AG's office late last night. And... Nothing has changed. Nothing's been walked back. Uh, the word capitulate or whatever he said, uh, that has not happened. Uh, so so our comp my complaint is still active. Uh, as far as Constable Heaps, I think it's still active. Uh, and the process continues. We just, you know, we'd like to work it out. Constable Heap and I did meet with uh, Harris County on a Friday for quite some time and on a Monday. We thought we had it worked out. We had an agreement. And then the next day, uh, you know, Lena decides she's going to hire outside counsel. And we wish them the best. I mean, uh, Constable Heap, depending on which way this goes, he and I will be asking for outside counsel at some point. Uh, but but our, our complaints are still open. They're still active. They're still under investigation. Nothing has changed other than what Commissioner Garcia put out. So I'll just let you be the judge of, of whether that's a valid deal that he put out or what it is. Thank you. I've got one last we're going to see some UH Hockey School uh, polling numbers that show Lena, her daughter, has opened up a gap from the, the summer numbers. You want to address that? Alex, how do you close the gap if it, in fact, exists between now and Election Day? Yeah, sure. There's a, a summer lull, but I would just say uh, clearly I have broad support, not only with law enforcement, but, you know, key difference in our fundraising is that mine's all here in Harris County, Lee's national, and so we're spending $1.5 on a broadcast buy. Uh, starting today to introduce myself to voters. Like I said, Lena has insulted everyone else for name calling, but she has no problem calling me Maga Miller, photoshopping things on my head. And so I think once voters know what I stand for, what my policies are, uh, it's going to be a pretty clear and decisive in this election box who people want to side with. Harris County is one of the most diverse counties uh, in the country. Uh, I believe they have about 20 percent African-American uh, population here. How are you going to make sure that these new policies, if, if stated, doesn't disproportionately affect one group over another? No, no I spend a lot of time talking to various pastors uh, across all of Harris County, and it's no secret that uh, minorities are the ones bearing the disproportionate burden of crime. Uh, and it's very uniform, doesn't matter what neighborhood you live in. Everyone wants more law enforcement. Part of more law enforcement is community policing. It's better interactions. That allows things to stop before they escalate to that horrible homicide when you have law enforcement that can do that. So uh, I've been receiving very strong support and spending a lot of time to make sure that we are aware of those challenges. But at this point, uh, I think it's pretty clear that all communities uh, need to be safe. Every kid has a right to walk down the street, and that's what this government's failing to provide. Thank you, guys. All right. Good. Good job. Good job. Good job.